had the pleasure of speaking with Constantine Karanopoulos from Neo Performance Materials. How are you today, Constantine? Uh, hi, Tracy. I'm very well. How are you? Constantine, I want to just jump right into your fourth quarter and your two 2021 earnings release because I don't feel like it got the kind of attention it deserved in the market. These numbers look remarkable to me. Let's start with your 539.9 million for 2021 and your 153.4 million were up 55.5% and 39% higher, respectfully. Let's talk about these numbers, please. Sure. Um, it was, there's no question, it was a good year uh, to 2021. I think uh, all of our uh, our, our, our shareholders were, were pretty happy, at least from what they told us. My board was happy. Our employees were happy because their bonuses uh, uh, were uh, are fairly generous for 2021. Um, but at the same time, don't forget that 2020 was uh, it was a you know a COVID uh, impacted year. It wasn't a great year. It has all all kinds of hardship. And by 2021, there was pent up demand in the markets. But coupled with everything that we've been working on over the past couple of years, sort of coming to fruition in terms of product development and so on, it, it ended up, you know, being a, a bit of a double whammy uh, in, in terms of pent up demand and all the good things that, that, that came to, to fruition. So it was a year that we hope it's a lot closer to being representative of what the earnings put, uh, potential of this company is. It's, as we continue to grow and unfold our strategy. But yeah, no complaints about 2021. Uh, it, was a, it was a good year indeed. Well, so, and of course, let's uh, just draw everyone's attention to the fact that you came out of retirement a year ago and uh, your stock, Again, is, yeah. stock has doubled since you came out of retirement. Yeah, um, yeah, it, I won't claim credit for all of that, but it happened on my shift, so I'll take it. Um, uh, you know, listen, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of, there's two different ways to, to look at crises. Um, and I'm referring to the 29, 29, late 2019, the automotive industry is going into the tank, COVID is emerging in 2020, boom, we all get hit with a two by four across the face with, with COVID shutdowns and having to teach old dogs like me new tricks of how to work from home and, and you know, things like that. So it, it was a big shock to the system. But with crises like this, you can look at them as, you know, disasters and, you know, my, the sky's falling. Oh, my God, what do we do now? Uh, or you can look at them as an opportunity. And again, I'll, I'll resort to, uh, to Henry Kissinger again, that you should never let or maybe it was Churchill that said, you should never long let a, a good crisis go to waste. Um, so uh, uh, doing crises like this, uh, I think it's a great opportunity to recalibrate your, your um, strategy to take advantage of you know, massive changes that are going on globally. And uh, you know, your, your business going forward will never be the same. So you need to adjust very quickly in order to capitalize of all, on all these opportunities. And I think that's what we've done fairly well uh, with our assets in Europe, our assets in, in Southeast Asia, et cetera. And I think it's, uh, it's paying off. So I'm, I'm happy with, with the results that I'm seeing. I think that's a great segue to discuss some of your sustainability awards that you have uh, announced recently. Can you tell us a little bit more about your processing plant uh, gold medal? Sure. Um, you know, we're, we're all in this very uh, important, very large uh, and expensive uh, ESG drive. I mean, the, the whole industry, um, supply chains are restructuring and so on. But there's no question that we're all aware that um, we, we impact um, our planet with everything that we do. So I think we all have the responsibility to, to minimize that impact. Uh, but at the same time, to translate it into how it affects companies like us or our suppliers, our customers, and so on. Um, ESG is, is, a, is a major trend that will have a, a, a massive impact in how we do business. And again, you can look at, an ES, at ESG as a problem to minimize it, or you can look at it as an opportunity. And, and I, I'm, I'm proud to say that at, at Neil, we've embraced it as, a, as not only the right thing to do, but also as an opportunity because we're using it to differentiate ourselves 
from a lot of our competitors in various parts of the supply chain. And, and you know, there's two, it, it, we, we all need to understand that ESG trend, this ESG trend is being driven by two directions. One is you have investors and shareholders who want to invest in ethically responsible and environmentally responsible companies, and they're making their views known. Um, no, that, let's not kid ourselves. Um, all the institutional investors are pushing their companies that they're, they're, they're invested in, uh, in that direction. But at the same time, all of our customers expect us to perform along ESG lines uh, because they do and they expect us to do. And, and that, you know, you feel you can fill in the entire supply chain um, with, with how these pressures manifest themselves. Um, so we think that this is good business. We think it's responsible uh, business. And, you know, I, I guess in the fullness of time, I expect that we'll be making more money if we do the right things while at the same time saving the planet. And again, it sounds Pollyannish, but it is the right thing to do both for the environment and, 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 and at the same time for our business. So, you know, you, you won't see any, you won't hear anything negative from me about uh, how it's implemented. Uh, so along those lines, we, we were on a push to get all of our uh, operating facilities uh, certified um, on ESG performance. And, you know, we recently announced that Ecovadis, uh, which is one of the premier uh, auditors, um, and that they have established a system to evaluate operations um, uh, along the processing industries. And, you know, with the, they audit all of our plans. And uh, they recently gave, um, you know, on the initial audit, <clears throat> they gave uh, our plant in uh, Estonia um, a gold medal, which is outstanding. Um, that plant is in the top 5% uh, of performance in the Ecovadis system. So we couldn't be more proud. We, we're doing this again with all of our processing facilities and we expect that, you know, I, I don't think we will, all our facilities will get gold medals, but they will be in somewhere near the top of, uh, of the uh, ESG uh, audit um, uh, scale. And, you know, there's no other way that, you know, we, we totally believe in this. We're going forward with it. And by the way, we will, uh, we will be issuing our uh, sustainability report uh, um, because we've, we've been working on it for about a year and we have a bit more work to do, but it's not going to be long before we issue our sustainability report overall for the whole company. Well, Constantine, thank you so much for joining us today. If I heard you right, you're doing it right. If you do it right, you'll make more money. Is that correct? Well, at the end of the day, we're all capitalists here, right? So we, we <laughs> that's the name of the game. You got to make money. And if you can make money and do the right things, do them the right way, hey, you know, we, we as, a, <laughs> as a world, we'll have a lot fewer problems to deal with. But yeah, that, that's the name of the game. We're, we're making money. We're making a lot of money and we're doing it the right way. So, you know, we're, uh, we're taking off all the boxes um, that we wanted to tick and um, we, we're very proud and very happy with, uh, with our performance. Thank you, Constantine. As always, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Tracy.